Let's uh, develop some general understanding of ice crystal size since it has a profound influence on the quality of foods as they are frozen. Let's look at uh, this figure where we have plotted a rate on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis where the temperature decreases as you move from left to right hand side. You notice that we begin the process at 0 degree C and supercooling occurs as you move from left to right. There is a curve shown for crystal growth and there is a curve for heterogeneous nucleation which is shown in red. So through experimental observations we can determine that numerous ice crystals are obtained when we have a high rate of freezing whereas a slow rate of freezing results in a few large ice crystals. So let's see if we can deduce this from this figure. If supercooling is between 0 degrees C and Ta, the temperature shown here in the plot, then as we see from the curve of nucleation the rate of nucleation will be extremely low and will result only in a few nuclei and these few nuclei will then grow into large ice crystals. The heat of crystallization from those growing crystals will tend to keep the temperature between 0 and Ta. On the other hand with supercooling to temperatures below Ta the rate of nucleation will be high as seen from the rising curve of nucleation which is shown in red. This will result in the formation of numerous nuclei. The large number of nuclei will grow to a relatively small size compared with the nuclei produced by the slow rate of freezing when the supercooling was minimal. Non-uniform temperatures within a food sample during freezing result in variations in the size of ice crystals. Regions that are close to the food surface will exhibit smaller ice crystals than in the center. If possible, vigorous mixing of the food can promote uniform temperatures throughout the sample and a corresponding generation of smaller ice crystals. Certainly we can accomplish mixing if the food sample is either a liquid or a semi-liquid. Now let's look at the location of ice crystals. In freezing tissue systems of plant or animal origin, the location of ice crystals is influenced by the freezing rate, sample temperature and nature of cells in the tissue. When freezing rates are low, for example 1 degree C per minute, then ice crystals appear only in the extracellular regions as shown in this animation. These ice crystals are large due to water movement from the inside of the cell to the extracellular region where the crystal then begins to grow and uh, that movement of water from inside the cell causes the uh, shrinkage of those cells. When tissues are frozen at a rapid rate then ice crystals form in both intra and extracellular regions as shown in this figure. So later on when a food with large number of small ice crystals is uh, thawed then the intracellular ice crystals will melt and the water will remain inside the cells thus avoiding the uh, shriveled type of appearance that one may observe when such foods are slowly frozen.